Hello participants, I am Dr. Laila Simon from the Bhopal School of Social Sciences and I am back here today with a new topic which is research design. So welcome to today's overview. Today we are going to discuss about what is a research design, what is the choice of a research design, what are the features of a good research design, what are the elements of research design and of course a very important fact what are the major parts of a research design. There have been a lot of confusions on research design and people have their own perceptions for this research design. Well, let me take a small quote from Thayer 1993 on what is research design. According to him, a traditional research design is a blueprint or detailed plan for how a research study is to be completed operationalizing the variables so they can be measured, selecting a sample of interest to study, collecting data to be used as a basis for testing the hypothesis and of course the most important part which is the analyzing the result. So where, when, how much, by what means concerning an inquiry or a research study. But remember, it is not a stagnant stage in the research process, rather than it's an ongoing backward and a forward integrated process by itself. So now let me tell you what is this choice of research design. Every respondent, every researcher can have their own choice in choosing the research design. There are various choices or designs of research design. Now, the choice of this design or this decision of the design is most appropriate design which will depend largely on the objectives of the research and how much is known about that problem and the research objectives. So for that, we should know what are the good features of a good research. Good features of a good research. So what are they? The first thing is means of obtaining information. From where are you collecting the information to find the introductory part of your research and to form up your statements of the problem? Skills of the research is something very important. I should really focus on this point because if a researcher doesn't have proper skill, you can't have or frame up a good research design. So skills of the researcher is a very important feature for designing a good research. Objective of the problem to be studies, you can't randomly pick up any objective for study. You have to study the background, the environment and then to formulate your own objective of the study. Well, to add on another important feature is the availability of time and the money that is involved in research work. I am talking here as a research work, maybe it is a major project, a minor work or maybe a well designed research paper. How much is the time are you going to devote for that? How much is the investment of the money in that? When I say investment of the money, you may be wondering what is the investment in the research? Exactly. You are going to collect a primary data, maybe getting into a rural area to collect the data. So you need money, you need time. So moving on to the most important part of the research design is to know and understand what are the elements that are there in a research design. There have been a lot of perceptions as I have already discussed. But we have proper steps that we need to follow and that will help us to identify these different elements that one should include in the research design. The first and the foremost important part is the introductory part. Well, we just simply write introduction anything not even related to the topic many a times. Sorry to tell you that you have to include the entire connection of the entire reviews that has happened in the past and connecting with the introductory statements. Only then you get a very good rich introductory part. So the most important part in the elements of the research design is the introductory because whoever reads a research paper, he should be able to connect with that paper and what is the entire area of your research area. 
however, it can be a broad area. The second element which is important in research design is the statement of the problem. You have to study the entire area of your cover and then to point down the entire statements of the problem that you are. So basically it will come up as the statement of the problem is the questions that need to be answered towards the end. The next foremost important element of research design is the reviews of the previous studies. You have to have a thorough study on the reviews of the previously done studies. Only then that is going to help you to connect what are the gap that exists between your study and what has been already done in the past. So review of the previous study has to be done generously and to find out on what are the parameters and the variables and the factors in which the entire study has been already taken care of. After analyzing the entire reviews and you have identified a gap of what is now the condition of your area of research. Is there any research that has done in the past related to the topic that you have taken into consideration? or you are just going to write on a random. Once you identify the gap, it is very good for you to analyze that gap and to move ahead with your research work. Next important element of your research design is the scope of study. This is a very important study, uh, important part of the study which mostly the researchers do not much give importance to. The scope of the study actually tells you on what are you going to cover the areas, the parameters, it can be demographic, it can be geographical. So it is very important because all your future uh, researches that are going to take place will depend on the scope of the study. So there should always be topics that has a future scope of study in your research pattern. The next important element of the research design is a very common element which all of us know and that is the objective of study. Normally we do not miss out the objective of the study. So when you are writing the objectives of the study, identify the main important areas and then formulate the objectives. We many a times keep on writing so many objectives, there is no need of that. That all can be included as a general study in the introductory part or when you are writing more about your research topic. But in the objective of this study, keep in mind, write in points. The next important is not a common application or an element for all the research work, but it is always advisable to come up with some conceptual model. You can either take a model and discuss on it or you are taking out the research and compare the outcome of your research with some well known model or in other words you can also take up and come up with a good model of your choice. So conceptual model in the present scenario of research however is coming up in a well uh, required manner and is very attractive. Uh, basically for publications. The next element that I am going to discuss today is the hypothesis. This is an element which most of us fear to go ahead. What is this hypothesis? Is it the no hypothesis or an alternate hypothesis? But we need to have a deeper study and connect it with the objectives of a study and also remember whatever you are framing up in your hypothesis, you have to connect it to the outcome of your research. Otherwise, your research design offers no use. So a very important factor is the kind of hypothesis. Uh, I'll be not discussing about the kind of the hypothesis right now, but you have to know how to choose the right hypothesis depending on the right research that you are taking up. The next element is the operational definition concept. How are you going to operate the entire concepts of your research? What are the tools and the techniques that are you going to use? What are your sampling methods? You have to mention, you have to prepare a gist, a plan that how are you 
going to operate the entire concepts of your research design. Followed comes the significance of the study. We normally write a research paper, we do a research just for the sake of doing it. However, it is advised that there has to be some significance when you are doing a research. So, though in the elements of the research design it comes at the, uh, towards a later end, but it has its own importance in formulating what is the outcome, how is your research helping out the society or how is your model that you have designed related to the life of the people. So, somewhere we have to keep in mind in designing a research design that what can be the significance of the study. Moving on to next is the geographical area that needs to be covered in your research. So, it can be always mentioned in the research design that there can be limitations, but it is always advisable to mention what is the geographical area you are going to cover under the research design. Another important element of research design is the reference period. I know it is always a question that comes up for researchers, how much period do we have to you know follow up for taking the reference. But you can't say it is a 2 year study, 3 year study, 4 year study, no. It depends on the entire relation of your data. How much of data do you need? Are you going to do a data study for the last 2 years? Are you going to do it for a 5 year study or are you going it for the 10 year study? Or the last 2 year data is sufficient for you to conduct your research. So, however, the reference period will always depend on the choice of your research design and also the choice of your research area. Next is the sampling plan. What we normally do is we just go into any kind of the sampling that is most appropriate. We collect the data and then we are in a huge question of confusion because the collected data is of no use for proceeding for the analysis. So, while planning the sample, you have to plan it up ki what is your target audience, what is your population, what is your sampling. How are you going to pull out, which is the method that you are going to uh, put forward to getting the answers to the questions that you have related in your either the research questions or in your statement of the problem. So, sampling plan has to be well designed, it is something very important in the entire elements of research design. However, let me also make this that every element has its own importance, but sampling plan is something if goes wrong will not give a desired output at the end. The next important element in the research design is the tools for gathering the data. However, there are many tools that through which the data can be collected, but how are you going to collect it? Is it an authentic collection of your data? Are the data that you are going to get needs lot of filtration? Will there be lot of outliers? All these points are very much taken care of before you start gathering the data. So, it is always advisable to collect the data in different ways so that you have sufficient data with you and of course, you can accordingly as per the next element plan for the analysis. So, while you are going to plan the analysis, it is not that you collect the data and you, for, you find it that ok, I am going to use this analysis also, this analysis. No, many a times if you want to get into an analysis and you may not have a sufficient data for doing that. So, what are you supposed to do? You have to choose a good sample, a good tool, it has to be designed and then you start with your analysis. So, already before you are starting your research, you have planned, you have written certain steps, how am I going to go about it, how are we be operational about it, that is the time you have to have almost an idea about what are the tools and the techniques that you are going to use in the coming up data and the planning of the analysis. The next comes for those who are either doing 
the projects or maybe uh, doing some kind of thesis or some kind of dissertation is the chapter scheme. How do you scheme the chapters? This is again always a question where to write the chapter, how many chapters should have, is it is not defined that these many chapters needs to happen. The chapters are to be designed according to your matter. So, you will have to take and call out which chapter can include what all uh, topics in that particular chapter. The scheming of the chapter is not any hard and fast rule of having 4 chapters, 5 tap chapters, nothing as such. But however, it is always advisable to put under different heads. So, when the reader reads it, it is easy for him to go to that particular chapter of his interest or his curiosity and to get connected with that particular chapter. Time and budget is something very important whenever you are doing research. The question is why? Because if you do not follow up time, you will not know when to finish up your studies and you will find by the time you come out with an output, all these research that you have done has already been published by somebody else and it is of no use. So, you have to give a time frame in which you have to finish up your entire research. So, though this is mentioned at the end, it has a very lot importance in the elements of research design. Moving on to the last part of the day is the parts of the research design. However, majorly you will find these four parts of design, but in some of them you will find there are just three parts of designs. The most important one is the sampling design. Now, what is the sampling design? Sampling design deals with the methods of selecting the items that needs to be observed for the study. So, as I mentioned in the past that while you are designing the sample, at most care has to be taken while designing or else you will not get the desired output. Some of the research design includes observational design as a part. It relates to the condition under which the observations needs to be created. However, this is not a very authentic way of designing because every observation has different perceptions. So, it can't be proved. So, most of the time you find this does not have much of importance in research design. But the most important design is the statistical design because it concerns the questions of how the information and the data gathered are to be analyzed. As I said, if your analysis goes wrong, the entire research is of no use. And finally, the operational design which deals with the techniques by which all the procedures that you are going to do with this has to satisfy entire sampling procedures. That is for all from me today. Good day.